All right. The next two drills we're going to do kind of back to you know kind of back to back um, because the first one is really short and the second one is pretty much the same thing that we already did in bending the cross. Okay, so when he goes to throw his hook, the if you just want to block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we refer to this position as top of the line. You put a flower behind your ear. Okay? So best way you do, palm covers your ear, your fingers curl around behind the back of the neck, and you keep this tucked tight. If you have boxing gloves on, this is great because it's like all that extra padding. Because sometimes people like to throw that wide hook, the sometimes it's called the casting punch, where basically it comes around. To hit behind at the behind the ear, okay. So, go ahead for your hook. All right. I want you guys to practice that for just a little bit, and then we're going to move into a count. Now, as you guys are working. This is not the same defense that you use in boxing for the hook. In boxing for the hook, you just keep this really tight because somebody who wraps their fist and tries to do that casting punch to come behind your ear, that's an illegal punch. So they don't so they don't necessarily need to be worried about that. They keep it nice and keep their guard nice and tight here to defend the hook. But in Muay Thai, hitting behind the ear is not illegal. And also because a lot of those people throw that wide hook. And turn it into a clinch. You want to make sure you we defend like this to prevent them from getting a good grip on you. All right, sorry, back to work. Guys, when you're doing this cover. You want it as close as humanly possible to your head, so throw it in. Throw it in. Okay. Okay. This is almost like headgear, it's glued to my head. If he throws that hook and I'm out, so he throws it, I'm out, now guess what he's going to do? He's going to come right through, he's going to crash me, he can stuff his arm to open me up, boom, hit me. Headgear, as tight as possible. Now, I'm also going to real quickly point out that I was teaching it this way without this. We're teaching this way because you guys are new to this. You see a lot of experienced fighters, and they do purposely do this to spike their opponent. But then again, these are guys who have meticulous timing. So they already know the risk of that other punch coming, and they already have something ready in case it does. All right, let's play. Just about another 30 seconds, because I want to move into the counter. Alright guys, time. Let's try, let's go ahead and transition into the into the counterattack. Alright, so he's gonna throw that left hook. I'm gonna instead of top of lock, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come forward and jam my block into the crooked's elbow. Get hold, reach, in. Okay. In. Let's play. I'm not 
not going to even have a follow up, and my hand isn't going to be there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's only, you know, when you're working with me, because so many of the, of the comments are nice. <laughs> It's, like, it's just like automatic, okay, I'm going to do whatever, and I'm just going to have my You know, hey, as soon as the clinch initiates, go here. This is my this is my safest, this, and this allows me to work. I have leverage now. Um, I, I my head my head is up. I can feel. I don't have to see. I can feel what's happening. And then as you go to throw, and then so if they get the posture, okay. And then you go to throw a knee. There we go. I'm already because I'm already in tight. I don't need to do. It's like I can just do a little. Like that, you're on balance in your knee. And yeah, but, uh, a buddy Mark does it. I don't know much about it. No? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. 